Hi there, my name is Martin Hoxie. I work for the Association for Learning Technology based in the UK and I'm also a G Suite Google Developers Expert. Today I want to talk to you all about Google Apps Script. Um, so this is a, a product that I'm very fond of and I've been using for a number of years and I think it has a lot of great benefits. In this session, um, I just really want to give you uh, an introduction to Google Apps Script. So what it is, what's possible, uh, and also some tips for getting started as well. So to begin with, um, what is Google Apps Script? So it sits within the G Suite family. So uh, it's a, a Google product. It um, benefits from being within G Suite and integrating into other products. And increasingly we're seeing it being used as a platform to develop other uh, functionality within G Suite. So extending Google Chat, for example. It's uh, a one app, uh, a one platform in the cloud. Um, so it, uh, as you'll see in a second, it has a number of benefits um, from sitting in Google's infrastructure. So um, uh, you can work with Google Apps Script similar as you can work with um, Google Docs and Google Slides through a, a web browser. Um, it's actually been around for 10 years plus. Um, I've, when I mention this to people, uh, a, a lot of people have to take a double take. So uh, Google Apps Script actually started in Google Sheets, uh, as I mentioned, over 10 years ago. So this tool script editor button has been around for uh, 10 plus years. Over that time, there's been a lot of development within Google Apps Script, so it hasn't remained static. So uh, it's developed and evolved. It's moved out from the Google Sheets editor uh, to also be included into Docs, Forms, uh, and Slides. And also you can do standalone scripts as well. So uh, you don't need to do something uh, that's uh, contained uh, to, to one of the G Suite editors. Um, more recently as well, uh, uh, Google Apps Script has been used to record macros. So uh, Christian um, was talking earlier about some of the no-code solutions available with AppSheet. So Apps Script, um, I think I see a lot of uh, low-code, no-code citizens, developers coming uh, using Google Apps Script uh, and becoming very professional developers as well. In fact, that's how I started out 10 years ago. I knew very little about coding and developing. I had a bit of knowledge. Um, but uh, a real interest in what was uh, possible within Google Apps Script uh, and I was able to achieve a lot and I've been around uh, for 10 years since developing the platform um, because it's a lot of fun. So uh, a couple of affordances of Google Apps Script. So um, in terms of uh, coding syntax, it's actually written in JavaScript. So um, up until recently, we were kind of stuck on a, an older version of JavaScript, but now it's uh, uses the, the Chrome um, runtime, so we got access to all the, the latest uh, JavaScript syntax. That means, you know, if you get stuck processing a bit of data within Google Apps Script, you can go into Stack Overflow and you can find lots of solutions for, you know, parsing arrays and doing things like that. Um, and there's lots of other resources as well if you want to, to start um, scripting uh, and you've got no background, so uh, there's lots of resources for Google, uh, JavaScript that you can apply the same techniques for Google Apps Script. It's serverless, so it sits on Google, Google's infrastructure, so you don't need to worry about updating, maintaining libraries or anything like that. Uh, you've got the power of Google behind you. And it's available at no cost, uh, no additional cost. So if you're a G Suite user, uh, you're, you're, you have access to Google Apps Script um, today. So even if you're not a G Suite user, um, Google Apps Script from the beginning well, I tell a lie, it wasn't actually from the beginning, but very shortly after beginning, it was made available to uh, at gmail.com, uh, so consumer accounts as well. There are different quotas and limitations, um, depending if you've got a, uh, at gmail.com account or if you're using a G Suite account, uh, and the documentation for Google Apps Script um, goes into some of those. So uh, sitting in Google's infrastructure in G Suite, it's integrated into a number of products. So I think this is one of the biggest bonuses for me and um, a huge selling point is that, uh, and I'll show you some examples in a second, that we can just open a script editor, 
we can start writing code. We don't have to install client libraries um, and we can just do stuff really quickly. So uh, in terms of entry, uh, it, it just really lowers that bar. So I think that's why we see a lot of low and no coders um, coming to Google Apps Script and using the product and prospering from it as well. Uh, it's a way to extend G Suite. So um, if you, you know, you're um, using Google Sheets or uh, Docs or Forms uh, and there's some functionality missing from those products, uh, Google Apps Script is a way to, to, to make those customizations, to make the products work for you, make uh, those products work for your organization better. Uh, so uh, add-ons is uh, kind of the uh, the way to do this. So uh, uh, we have uh, editor add-ons, which um, are customization within the editors. More recently as well, um, Google are using Apps Script as a way to power um, Drive add-ons and also Gmail add-ons and Calendar add-ons. So um, it's really interesting to see how the product is evolving over time. So. We started off with editor add-ons. Um, now we have Gmail add-ons. Uh, with Gmail add-ons, they're using uh, a card service, which you can find out more information about. But what that means is uh, when you develop a Gmail add-on, it's available on your uh, browser, within your mobile app. You don't have to deploy additional code or anything like that. You can st start extending the functionality of these products very quickly. Um, I think a big win for Google Apps Script is, is a, a complete productivity and automation tool. It is um, really quite um, amazing what you can do, particularly using time triggers. So with time triggers, you can basically set up um, a scripts to run as the user, even if they're not at the keyboard. So um, you can set up things to run you know, on a, a, a minute, basis, a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis, or a one-off in the future. Um, so it means I can write scripts and then I can start sipping margaritas on the beach, um, knowing that you know, scripts are running, they're processing data, they're sending reports to my boss, uh, uh, and I've not had, other than uh, writing the initial script, I've not had to do anything more. Also, we can interact with the documents uh, within the editor, so we can detect when something is uh, been edited or submitted or changed uh, and we can react to those um, events uh, with Apps Script and, and kick off additional processes, provide user input uh, and, and a whole host of other things as well. It's also um, increasingly a, a new marketplace. So the, the Google Marketplace is where you can distribute add-ons. So add-ons could be developed uh, for uh, general use, for, for anyone to use, but they're also a great way of distributing customizations within your G Suite domain. So you can write um, an add-on uh, specific for your, uh, your enterprise uh, and distribute it to all, just your users within your enterprise. Um, so it's a good, great way of developing code, um, extending functionality, of uh, the G Suite editors and doing more as well. And, you know, it's a, a huge marketplace. You know, there, there are, you know, billions of uh, active users within uh, the Google marketplace. A number of add-ons have, you know, millions of, of users. Um, so it, 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 we're actually seeing a number of um, people um, turning to, to add-ons as a, a a commercial venture. So um, Supermetrics, for example, um, have a, a very popular add-on for uh, doing analytics. So it actually integrates with a number of services, including Google products. Um, and uh, they, they were actually able to raise uh, a sizable chunk of, of funding a couple of years ago. Uh, so I think it's a, a really interesting place to start um, tapping into a huge user base uh, and uh, uh, monetizing that as well. So that's kind of a, an overview of um, Google Apps Script. So I think where I think people see uh, the, the real benefits and practicalities and the affordances of Google Apps Script is actually seeing some examples. So uh, I'm gonna do uh, uh, some live coding. So let's see how this goes. Uh, I've only got four lines here to do though, so this should be relatively straightforward. 
Um, so uh, this example is also available on uh, Google's code base, code labs, sorry. So um, if you want to try this out, uh, there are a number of code labs for Google Apps Script. So this is just one example. Uh, so uh, feel free uh, to explore those and um, uh, have a look. But here's uh, a Google Sheet that I've set up earlier. So I'm just going to make a copy of this. So something to say about uh, Google Apps Script. So when uh, Apps Script was launched, uh, scripts were container bound. So uh, when you make a copy of your um, Google Sheet, uh, and if you've got any script written with that, the, the, the script copy goes with the sheet. This cause, causes some problems in terms of your script becomes orphaned. So if you need to push updates, um, looking at add-ons is a, a better way of doing that. So as I mentioned, it's in the, the tool script editor. So uh, uh, I'm just going to open that. Uh, so this is all um, online. So I've not had to do any additional setup. So I'm not using my own ID here, but we can. So uh, I've got uh, uh, my little command line here. So I'm just going to put in a couple of lines of code. So what I'm going to do is just create a sheet object. So um, the script editor has a, a nice autocomplete. So we're going to just call the spreadsheet app service. We're just going to get the active sheet. So it's aware of the context that we're, we're pulling these things in. So now if I want to get the address, uh, it, and there's the methods that we can use. So I'm going to get a range. So we're going to interact with the sheet here. So I'm going to just use a one notation. So I just want the value from cell a one. Let me get the all complete. There we go. Get. Let me just skip that down. So we're going to get value. So what this is doing is it, uh, the script is going to go to the uh, sheet that this um, script is bound to, and we're going to collect the address just by calling the the value from uh, cell A1. So there are a couple of other things we're going to do here. So I'm just going to drop some code in to save me typing. Um, so we've got uh, another constant called map. So maps is actually the Google map service. So we're going to generate a static map and we're going to add a marker with our address. And then we can also call Gmail. Uh, so we can send emails from Google Apps Script. So uh, you can use aliases as well if you've set up al aliases on your Gmail account. Um, so this uh, is going to send an email to uh, uh, my, my test account. We put a subject line, we can fill in the body and we can even do attachment. So we're just going to throw in our, our map as an attachment. So I'm just going to run this script now. So I've not done any additional setup. Uh, we're just going to run this code. So uh, immediately the script editor has detected the scopes that we need to run this script. Um, so we um, need to give it permission. So I'm just going to run this. Uh, so it will detect the scopes of the uh, uh, services that you've pulled in. So I've pulled in Gmail. It's also got uh, a spreadsheet call here. Uh, so in terms of this authentication flow, uh, it's required the first time you run your script and whenever you make uh, um, major updates to your script. So if you're calling in uh, new scopes, uh, the user will be uh, required to authenticate. But once you've done that once, uh, you, you can run the script as many times and it, it won't uh, require uh, the authentication to come back up. So I'm just going to quickly go into my Gmail account and just show you what's come back here. So you can see I've sent a couple of examples here. So here we have our map and we have our uh, image with the marker on it. So four lines of code, we've interacted with Google Sheets, we've interacted with Google Maps, and we've interacted with Gmail. Um, one other thing I just want to show within the script editor is uh, it's got some debug functionality as well. Um, so if I just put a breakpoint here, 
uh, we've got our little debug. Um, so the script editor has been around for a number of years um, and Google are actually working on an updated version of this. So hopefully we'll see that soon. Um, but you can see, I can see the values that we're pulling from our sheet. So it makes it easy in terms of our script development just to, to look at that. We can do things like logs. We can look at execution transcripts and the, there are a whole host of other things that we can do within the script editor as well. So I'm just gonna jump back to slides. Um, so there's uh, the code that we included within this example. So um, the next thing I want to show you is customizing the G Suite editors. So um, how we can actually use sidebars and dialogues to interact with the, the user. Um, so this is a, another um, uh, uh, example that's available within the documentation. So this time we're going to use uh, uh, Google Docs and we're going to use uh, the Google Translate service. So I'm just gonna open up this doc and I'm just gonna make a copy of this. So this is uh, an add-on in kind of development mode. So we haven't put this into the marketplace yet, um, but it just means that we can test our add-ons before um, you know sharing them to the world. So We've got our add-ons menu up here. And if we just give it a couple of seconds, it will detect that there's a, a script. Here we go. So we've got a quick translate script. So again, I'm just gonna quickly jump into the script editor um, just so you can get an overview of the code here. Um, so we've got our translate script, um, which has a, a number of uh, functions in it. So we've got uh, various methods we use when we're developing add-ons um, for install events and open events uh, and then actually uh, interacting with the document. So similar to uh, the Google Sheets example, we can actually call the document app, we can get the active document, we can detect the selection. So let me just show you how this works in practice. So if I go into our quick translate add-on, so again we're going through our authentication flow. Um, so uh, this is the first time I've uh, run this script. So uh, it's detecting the scopes that we're um, um, wanting to manage the document. And also we want to uh, display sidebars and prompts. So I'm just gonna allow those. Um, so, and here we have our sidebar. So we can actually interact with the document now so I can select parts of the document and uh, through App Script, we're, we've got context awareness. So um, if I choose French and click translate, we get our translation here. So we can do more with Google App Script. We could actually translate the whole document and create a new Google Doc with App Script. Um, we could translate it and send it as an email for verification, create our own custom flows. Um, you know, there, it's really the tip of the iceberg in terms of what you can do. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, go back to the slides and let's just look at some of the code behind this. So in terms of uh, creating that sidebar, uh, we use the HTML service. So uh, in terms of uh, uh, G Suite editors, uh, we have access to a HTML service, which allows us to develop all our HTML you can uh, use HTML5 and, and basically use that to create your interfaces uh, within the sidebar. With the newer add-ons for uh, Gmail and Drive, it's using a card service. Um, this is how they get uh, cross-platform compatibility. So um, there's a slight, you know, a different development process in terms of developing add-ons when you're using a card service, um, uh, but um, Google are constantly improving the available cards that are available there as well. So as I mentioned, um, we're using the HTML service here. We're creating uh, some uh, sidebar UI and actually the sidebar UI HTML is in the script editor. So we can actually have, we're not having to host resources, uh, HTML files elsewhere. We can do this in the script editor. Uh, there's some, uh, if you're including things like images um, in your your uh, your sidebar, you, you you may have to host those elsewhere. Uh, but what we see a lot of developers use 
uh, do is use base64 encoding for images so that they can um, host those um, within the script editor as well. Uh, so uh, that's an overview of the interface. And then in terms of the actual translation, the one line of code, you know, we can call the language app, which is essentially Google Translate. We can send our text in uh, and we can um, choose the destination language from and even specify the origin, origin language. There's auto detection available as well. Um, so far, I've talked about G Suite editors, so, and I've mentioned that it's uh, possible to use Google Apps Script to develop um, for some of the other G Suite products. So um, let's look at um, creating a chatbot for, for Google Chat. So Google Chat um, has been around for uh, a couple of years now, a messaging platform for Teams. So as part of that, um, it, it has the facility to create uh, chatbots. There are actually a number of different um, architectures that you might want to use for developing chatbots. So an app script is just one of them. So you can use Cloud PubSub or webhooks or web services. So um, Google App Script isn't always going to be the right tool for this, but uh, uh, if you're primarily working with G Suite data and other G Suite products, then uh, because of the integrated authentication that you have, uh, Google App Script is a great product for that. Um, so I'm just going to look at uh, a quick example of developing some uh, a, a Hangout chatbot, sorry, a Google Chat chatbot um, uh, with Google Apps Script. So again, in this example, uh, I'm going to use uh, the Maps service, uh, but this time I'm also going to um, save our generated map on Google Drive. So uh, I just want to show you how easy it is to interact with Google Drive as well. So uh, this chatbot is already deployed. So I just want to show you uh, how it works. So I can type in my bot name, where it is, and I'm going to add a location. So where is London? And so our bot, so within uh, uh, chatbots, we're using a card service. So we're pulling back an image and we've also got a link. So we can actually open this link out on uh, uh, Google Maps as well. So I'll just quickly uh, jump back to slides and just give you, uh, uh, again, this is a, another example uh, that's available. So you can look in more detail at the code behind this. Um, but I just wanna highlight, so uh, within uh, uh, chatbot development, um, we, can, we have a number of uh, events that we can um, to hook into. So one of those is the message event. So we get actually quite a bit of information back from the, the message event. So here I'm drilling down the JSON into the message uh, and it, um, getting the bot display name. Uh, and then we're also getting a location. So we're getting, uh, uh, we're removing the bot name from the message text and we're just using that to generate a location. So similar to the first example, we're calling the uh, Google Maps service. We're generating a, a, a map. So we get that map back uh, and similar to how we attached it uh, into uh, a Gmail message, we can uh, interact with Drive app. So this is interacting with Drive. We're getting uh, a particular folder. So we're gonna put this file, this image away in a particular place. So we're going to uh, create a file with the map. So, you know, we're also setting a name. So, uh, you know, in one uh, line of code, you know, we're, we're adding a new file to, to Google Drive. And then the rest of the code is to update uh, the card um, service so that we get the image of the map uh, back to our bot and also the, the link to Google Maps as well. So, so far I've um, uh, given you um, some examples of how you use the script editor to develop code. Um, so uh, for some people, they, you know, the, the, the script editor has some limitations in terms of kind of uh, production and version control. Um, but for professional workflows, uh, there are actually a couple of command line um, tools that you can use that have been developed 
so that you can interact with um, and deploy Google Apps Scripts. So uh, one that uh, has been developed by Google and made open source is called Clasp. Um, so this allows you to use your uh, local IDE of choice. So uh, Visual Studio Code is a very popular one. Uh, so you can develop your code um, locally and then you can deploy it uh, to the cloud to into Google's infrastructure. Um, so with Clasp, it integrates with TypeScript as well. Um, so you can start future proofing your code as well. Um, so it, it's a, a nice option in terms of you know app script development. So if you if you don't want to be limited, uh, and we've got an extra slide in there. So just ignore that. Um, well, the other thing I I just want to really highlight and iterate is. I've talked here about integrating with uh, other Google products, uh, which is really easy. Hopefully you can see that it's kind of uh, child's play stuff in terms of interrupting with a whole host of um, other Google products, but it's not limited to Google products. Um, you know, if you have other uh, APIs for, for, from third parties that you want to interact with, um, or if you've got data sitting on a server somewhere, um, as long as it's accessible by HTTP or HTTPS request, um, Google Apps Script has a URL fetch app um, um, method, so you can get that data back. So you can do gets, posts, and various other methods. Um, so as well as collecting data, you can actually push out data uh, to other services. So uh, there are a number of examples out there. Um, a lot of my work is um, working around Twitter. So I, I do things with Google Apps Script in terms of collecting data from Twitter and also uh, posting tweets and things like that. You can do this all within Google Apps Script. So um, there are libraries out there to help you if you're using um, OAuth um, uh, or OAuth 2, uh, you can drop a library into Google Apps Script just to help with that whole hand uh, handover and signatures and tokens uh, and refreshing tokens, uh, all that lovely gory stuff. Um, so hopefully that's given you uh, an overview of Google Apps Script if you haven't come across it before. Uh, some of the possibilities that are, are uh, available within the platform. If you want to learn more, uh, there's a, a whole host of documentation. Um, uh, you can delve in um, to the, the various reference material, but there are a number of tutorials and guides as well, give you a, a real sense of what's possible um, uh, and start reusing code from other um, projects and just tweaking it to your needs. As I mentioned, there are code labs available. Um, in terms of uh, support from the community, we have a Google Apps Script community on Google Groups, um, which is a very supportive community in terms of um, if you're wanting to know if something's possible, why is something broken, um, you can join that group. We also have a, quite an active uh, hashtag on hash G Suite devs. Um, so you can see some of the content uh, that's been shared, questions, answers by the community. And on Stack Overflow, we have the Google Apps Script uh, uh, tag there. So you can ask your questions on Stack Overflow. Uh, and we're always looking for people who are um, able to answer those questions as well. Um, we have a, a number of uh, top contributors there. On GitHub, there are a number of examples uh, from G Suite devs of what's possible with Google Apps Script. Uh, and a new place uh, that has uh, come about recently, um, G Suite have uh, provided the solutions gallery. So um, this is a great place to see the range and variety of uh, solutions that people are developing. So initially uh, this was populated by Google, but now community members are contributing as well, providing their own solutions. So you'll find in there, for example, uh, a mail merge sol solution that um, I've submitted. Uh, so you can see some of the really cool and interesting things that people are doing with Google Apps Script, integrating with a host of other services um, uh, and essentially getting the job done. Um, one other thing just to uh, place to highlight is um, I'm part of Apps Script Pulse. So this is a, a, a community uh, website where we collect examples of Google Apps Script 
Um, so we have uh, a whole range of uh, solutions that um, have been developed and shared by the community. And it's really encouraging. It's, I, I find it inspirational to see the types of things people are doing with Google Apps Group. Um, and you know, just the exploration that they're doing. So developing things with conversational interfaces, doing things with machine learning, um, a, a whole range of things, but also kind of the grassroots problems that we encounter on, on a day-to-day -day basis, how those can be quickly solved with a bit of Google Apps Script. Um, so that is me. The slides are available at goalt.ac.uk slash 24HR. 24HR, sorry. Uh, uh, thank you for your time uh, and uh, I look forward to answering any of your questions.